Hello my soccer universe, let's look what happened last weekend, a weekend where uh, thanks to my birthday and having a hockey game to watch, uh, I didn't see too many games uh, and especially my birthday was full with great games and yeah, I always didn't focus on the right things I realize now in hindsight and first of all making things right, I'm wearing my Chelsea away jersey which I probably should have worn when I talked about the Friday and Saturday games because Atletico Madrid won, yes, good, but Chelsea's performance was for sure more impressive. So I haven't seen the highlight at that point to, to make a thing. So that's making things right part one. Making things right part two is in La Liga, where I completely spaced out on the simple fact that Granada won. Now, I want to soften this. Um, I was aware that Granada is up there, of course. I mean, I'm doing my daily videos and so on. I was also aware that the Classica was not played. So now with Granada's win over Betis, this is a good story in itself, although Betis is pretty atrocious this uh, season. They take, of course, top spot because Barcelona and Real Madrid were not playing. It is as simple as that. So the table actually currently does not really reflect the strengths um, that the teams are. Although, um, you know, we have now round 10, the results you see here. Uh, so we can say that uh, now it, uh, having 10 games in the book, usually you say, yeah, now the table, it's, you see something shaping up. We can make at least a few more conclusions that we were not able to do like a month ago when there was only five games played, for instance. So we have Villarreal winning a big one for one uh, Leganes over Mallorca. Um, that was the first win for Leganes. Where the lead wins over Eibar and Atletic Madrid 2-0 uh, over Athletic Club. Um, Real Sociedad continues their good streak and we will see they also shoot up in the table as of course Granada, we talked about that. Espanyol gets a, a vital win at Levant um, I think it's the second win in a row, something like that, and away from home. Um, in addition, Sevilla beats Getafe to nil, and Valencia is in uh, bad shape, 3-1 uh, loss at Osasuna. Of course, the big one was not played. So if you look now at the table, Granada takes the top spot, but you know, Barcelona has one game less. If Barcelona wins the Clásico, or even draws, they are already one they are uh, already ahead of Granada, so Granada not really is the first place team. La Sociedad though, 19 points, and Atletico Madrid 19 points, you know, those seem to be um, really strong teams this season. Sevilla, I never know what to say about Sevilla, Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid also 18 points, so they would be right within, let's say the Clásico ends in a draw, which is probably what I, 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 I would say that Real Madrid shoots up to third spot again. So. Big deal that they're now in sixth. Um, Villarreal continues their good form. Osasuna is also a good promoted team. Uh, then we have Real Madrid Athletic Club. <laughs> I think they should be much better. Uh, Getafe is probably where they, where you would expect them uh, given last season. I think the last season was probably a little bit of an outlier, although they played great. Valencia, again, horrible start to the season. Levante, not much better. Alaves hangs in the Mallorca. Um, yeah. Has to get out of there, Eibar, Celta, and then the bottom three, Betis, Espanyol, and Leganes, but it gets a little bit tighter with Leganes winning now. Let's move to the Premier League. Uh, I, the big result, let's see the 9 0 over Southampton. And the funny thing was that with that loss, Southampton actually lost a spot, although the others have not played. I mean, that in itself, thanks to goal difference being a tiebreaker is remarkable. Um, City over Villa, we talked about that, 3-0, uh, Brighton wins 3-3 over Everton, Watford, Bournemouth only a 0-0. Watford doesn't get many wins, uh, <laughs> or they haven't gotten a win, I think it's all draws with them. West Ham, Sheffield, kind of disappointing 1-1, and then uh, Chelsea's 4-2 win at Burnley with Christian Pulisic scoring a hat-trick, of course, the big story. And I have to say, Chelsea is a big story this season. Uh, with a youth team squad, I have not given them too much love, but I really have to say, Chelsea are performing much better than one could expect ahead of the season, and I gotta give props to Frank Lampard. An appointment that I honestly thought comes too early, but I was wrong, at least so far. I think Chelsea will hit a rough patch, but given the uh, competition in the Premier League, that uh, I think outside of Liverpool and Manchester City, everyone is kind of so-and-so. I think Leicester, Chelsea are 
the next two teams and then the rest is a weird mishmash of uh, teams that should be better and seems and and teams that are surprisingly good but you know they're all kind of a sameish level uh, Newcastle won one against Wolves Arsenal only a two to a Palace although those two teams uh, as we'll see are uh, towards the top of the table Liverpool in the big clash beats Tottenham um, in a replay of the Champions League final and to be honest I know this was a Champions League final, but when I see Liverpool Tottenham, given that Tottenham is so horrible these days, it doesn't seem that it deserves all the attention as a rematch of the Champions League final because Spurs is not in Champions League form. Manchester United gets a win at Norwich, um, which I think is a pretty good uh, result for them. So in the table, Liverpool stays way ahead of the pack, but only six points. And now it looked when they had uh, six points last week uh, since. City did worse not over the 22 point, but it looked a little bit a bigger lead and it's now 28 22. That seems much closer, doesn't it? Psychology was uh, messing with us. I think it's still very tight between those two. Uh, I think City has it in them to catch Liverpool. Um, but let's see how it goes. Leicester and Chelsea, 20 points each. Those two seem to be, as I said, the next best teams. Then then there's a big drop and uh, Arsenal 16, Palace 15. I, to me, it's amazing that Arsenal is still up there. When you are week in, week out, you feel that this is not Arsenal. They're playing good at home, not this week. And then bad, bad away. Um, but they're picking up points. United makes a huge jump up into seventh. Sheffield uh, United is also in uh, on same... Uh, level on points with them as is Bournemouth and West Ham. Then Spurs really dropping. Uh, Wolves, Burnley and Brighton also have 12 points and then we are really entering relegation battle with Aston Villa, Everton, Newcastle and the bottom three Southampton, Norwich and Watford and I have to say Southampton really really looks bad and they play now twice City so I fear for them a little bit. Bundesliga there you got uh, a lot from me. I think I talk about every game bar one and that's Leverkusen Bremen where I haven't seen any highlights but any the 2-2 two, two draws. I'm not going to spend much time because I really spent much time talking about these games. Um, in the table Gladbach stays top, Bayern is now second, um, Freiburg third, Wolfsburg is falling out because they couldn't get that one win that would have been vital for them. Uh, give them two points more and they're in second place. So, uh, But Wolfsburg is kind of, they have not really played a big opponent so far and they're kind of hanging in there. I think Wolfsburg will keep falling. Dortmund is right in the mix now. Uh, again with 16 points, Leipzig and Schalke. Uh, Leverkusen with 15. And then, yeah, Frankfurt. I don't think Frankfurt will make Europe this uh, season. We'll see. Uh, Hoffenheim, they're both at 14, then they have to really the drop. So it's kind of the top 10. It's not as close as it was last week, where the top 9 were within 2 points. We have it now that we have the top 10 within 5, which is still quite tight. But 2 points down, uh, within 2 points, you have only the top 4, which is more uh, what you would expect. Um, so then Hertha, Bremen, Mainz, Düsseldorf, Union Berlin, Köln, Augsburg, Paderborn. It's really tight on the bottom and a win can do wonders for you as it was shown by my, uh, with Mainz. They got out, out of it. Going to my favorite league Serie A, although <laughs> with Milan. I uh, also talked about most results. So uh, the ones that we talked about, I will skip Genoa gets the first win over Brescia uh, which was a huge boost for them we also have um, Atalanta I said 7-1 um, Torino Cagliari, Roma Milan, Fiorentina Lazio I talk about all these games so look, let's go straight to the table Juve and Inter despite only doing draws still remain top Atalanta can creep closer uh, closes the gap by two points but Napoli is falling off and they are playing now this will be a huge matchup Napoli needs to that that win and then hope uh, that Inter and you will keep on dropping points uh, kind of disappointing because Napoli I think is a really talented squad Roma and Lazio gain places um, thanks to Toto their wins and they should be in the mix up there Cagliari, Parma, uh, Fiorentina, Bologna I think uh, those four teams I want to see how 
they're doing. I think they are so far a little bit of surprises of the season, especially Carl Cagliari. Um, they might go up there again. Let's see. Uh, then the dreary midfield: Torino, Milan, uh, Sassuolo. Maybe not Torino, Milan. I would say Udinese. That's the midfield. I mean, Milan. It's 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 a disgrace. After nine games, only 10, 10 points. Yes, you can lose to Roma, but you better start pick, picking up points now. Uh, Sassuolo, Hellas, Lecce, Genoa, Brescia, Spal, it really is tight, and Sampdoria. Yeah, but a win would... If they would get, get, get a win, they would get out again. So it's really, 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 really tight towards the bottom. And I have to say, Milan is only three points ahead of the drop. Watch out, watch out. Liga. Uh, the not Monaco matchup. We will see uh, had the effect that PSG is not pulling away in, in, in further. Not uh, did not lose a spot. Lille, however, is now very close to not with Brest beating Dijon 2 0. So the promoted team getting something. Uh, Lyon Metz um, um, 2 0. So Lyon finally gets a win again. Uh, then 2 0, Lille draws Montpellier and Reims Nîmes. Strasbourg gets a win over Nice, and then on Sunday, Rennes gets a uh, pretty tumultuous 3 2 win over Toulouse, Saint Etienne, Amiens 2 2, and then PSG utterly destroys Marseille. In the table, yeah, PSG, and then there's the rest, but the rest remains super tight. Uh, 10 points between second and last. Nantes, Lille, Reims uh, in the round, round of top four, then we have Brest, Angers at 17, Marseille with that loss, only 16, and then, yeah. I know it's all only point, but I think here we kind of those teams we have to see whether they will make uh, Europe with a run they could. Uh, Rennes leapfrogs uh, Bordeaux, uh, and Montpellier, Monaco had a good run, and they are now they were bottom of the table now. Then eleventh, Saint Etienne also with fifteen, Lyon now thirteen uh, together with Nice, Strasbourg and Toulouse twelve, and then Nîmes at eleven and Dijon nine. It remains super tight on the bottom. There has to be said. Now let's go to Russia, where we had the two Moscow derbies uh, with Dynamo Moscow beating ZSKA and Spartak beating Lokomotiv. Uh, I would say the two outsiders won there. Zenit stays top with a 2 0 win over Sovetov. Um, and yeah, if you look at the table, it's Zenit, Rostov, Lokomotiv, and Krasnodar that are on the top. Zenit actually flying away. The rest is kind of tight. You can really see the top five are kind of together and then there's the big drop um, remains to be seen where this continues in Portugal we had the big top of the table clash where Porto beats family cow so did the fairy tale end here let's see uh, I saw the third goal uh, for poor Porto uh, horrible mistake by uh, the goalkeeper there, although uh, there was a lot of pressing by Porto. Benfica uh, wins over Tondela and Sporting 3-1 over Guimaraes uh, in a Europa League battle. So Sporting comes closer, but in the table is still Porto, Benfica, then Family Cao and then the rest. So let's see. Family Cao might well hang in there. Uh, we had also a top of table clash in Belgium, which ended in a 1 1 draw. So, uh, Club Rouge and Standard de Liege are still separated by three points. However, Mechelen could uh, take uh, advantage of that. Also, Ghent only got a 0 0 at Saint Truiden. So, yeah, um, Belgium seems to be Club Rouge. Maybe Liege could get in there. Uh, I mean, the away win for them was a big one. Big results also happened in the Netherlands, um, especially with PSV losing at home to Alkmaar and Ajax winning with the same scoreline over Feyenoord, meaning Alkmaar jumps now in second spot. Uh, Ajax is six points clear and we have three, point, uh, three teams with 23 points then behind. It's Alkmaar, PSV and Vitesse, who also lost to um, Ado Den Haag. So... Uh, very interesting, the top Utrecht also is in there, as is Willem Tue. And then I think those are the teams that will make uh, Europe or will fight for Europe. Uh, let's go to Turkey, where we had also a big derby, Besiktas beating Galatasaray. Uh, also the outsider winning, because Galatasaray is not very well within the league at the moment, but Besiktas was worse 
One nil win for Galatasaray. Takes care of that. Uh, top of the table, Alanyaspor only man manages a 1-1 against uh, Gaziantep. Uh, Fena, 5-1 over um, uh, Konyaspor, moves now in second spot. And yeah, the league is uh, still wide open. The two Europa League teams have battled out on Monday. Bajakshi here 2-2 against Trabzonspor, meaning those two stay in the top. So if we look at the table, it's Alanya ahead of Fenerbahce, then Malatyaspor, which is, um, I think, the big surprise. Trabzon could be in, should be in there. Sivaspor is also always a team that's um, near near the top. And then Bajakshi and Galatasaray is seventh. Bajakshi is in eighth. So uh, two big teams are kind of struggling, but it's still tight enough and the season is a long one. So let's see where he goes from here. Austria, huge clash between Salzburg and the Rapids with a dramatic stoppage time free kick that wins it for Salzburg. Rapid battled back, although they were utterly dominated in the first half. This could have easily gone the way that uh, the Ajax Feyenoord and PSG Marseille game was going, but it didn't. Uh, last second gets uh, win and with Wolfsburg dropping points against Lodi Admira, um, we'll see, we will see some separation. I also, but before we look at the table, I want to note that Austria Wien loses at home to Swarovski Tirol. Really, really, really uh, bad result. I think within seven minutes, they were two goals down. Absolute disgrace. So if we look at the table here, Salzburg three points ahead of Lusk. Uh, those are the top two, and then there's a or or a gap five points. Um, to Wolfsburg and then three points to Rapid. So finally, uh, last gained some separation from Rapid again, which uh, I think is more uh, what the teams are. Sturm is in there, Hartberg is in there, and then there's really a drop. You can really make top six ball, but bottom six. I think the top six now will make the top six. I don't think Austria will make it in the top six. Last year it was Rapid, this year is Austria who will not make it. The Vien Viennese team need to get there, you know what, together. Um, also in the Czech Republic, we have a team separating itself from the rest with Slavia winning over Pilsen in the one versus two matchup, and that basically means almost now the league for Slavia. Uh, only 14, uh, 14 games played there. Uh, Sparta winning over Bohemians, another Prague derby. Um, if you look at the table, Slavia now nine points clear of Pilsen. Mlada Boleslav, 25, Yablon and Slovacko. So, you know, there's a lot of names that you wouldn't expect necessarily up there. Sparta is only in seventh place. Um, then, one next, next and last league is Greece, where the big match was between Olympiakos and Aik. Olympiakos winning 2-0. Well, uh, Pauk gets an... Hopefully, easy win over Volos. Uh, Panathinaikos losing at home to Larissa is a notable result that kind of uh, jumps out, out at you. There was also a small Athens star between Atromitos and Panionos, 4 0 for Atromitos. If you look now at the table, um, there was also a top of the table between uh, o OFI and Xanti. Uh, and a 2 nil for the team from Crete, so they stay in there. So let's look at the table. Olympiakos stays two points ahead of Pauk. Uh, have, have to see when those two are meeting, but those two seem to be the class in Greece. And then it's kind of this uh, win of Olympiakos dropped Ike out more or less, uh, giving it a chance. So we have uh, Crete and Xanti still on top, and then Ike, Larissa, and Panikos is in 11th spot, so that's kind of low. Well, yeah, this is where the leagues are at the moment. Let me know uh, if you have anything to add of what I said here. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.